so good afternoon. Uh, okay, so I am from Boston. I live in Boston. I don't get to speak here very much, and I know from my own experience that that was weak. Let's try that again. Good afternoon. Much better. So hi there, my name is David Blank Edelman. I am the technical evangelist, or I, as I like to say, evangelist with a hard G, for a company called AppSera. We make uh, container management system things. Um, and if you want to talk to me at some point about container management stuff, um, I would be delighted to talk to you. And I also know that there's going to be some sort of thing put on by my company where there's a happy hour that you're invited to. Come see me afterwards or come see the nice salesperson who's around here to do that. But what I really want to talk to you about is SRE. Or, you know, like, like we're going to do like SRE for DevOps here, just sort of with the assumption that you kind of already know the DevOps piece of it, and you want to know, like, what's this SRE thing? Just for my own curiosity's sake, because my sense is, is that some people have a handle on this and some people don't, how many people here have SRE as your title? So you can keep me honest. Wow, there's a lovely group of you. So that's going to be great. So you will let me know afterwards whether I have done a good job of representing you. If I haven't, I apologize in advance, but it's going to be great. OK, so the first question is, how many people can tell me what this is? I'll move that little cursor out of the way. I apologize for that. Yep. How many people can tell, how many people can tell me what this is? Raise your hand if you know. Wait, you said bad documentation. I don't think that's what I'm looking for. What else? Wait, wait, it doesn't help. You've got to raise your hand so I can point at you. Oh, it's a, it is a white screen. This is what happens when a PHP app errors. <laughs> OK, this is what you get. Um, and in fact, this is, you know, I'm, I was going to put this up, but this is causing too many people in the audience to twitch. So, I, so, so I'm, I'm going to go back to this. The idea here is, is that you can have in your product, in your service, in whatever, as many features as you want. It can do everything from taking your dry cleaning in to, I don't know, whatever, they, you know, removing vowels from new startup names, whatever it is, right? It can be any of these sort of things. But the key thing that really is important at the end of the day is this question about reliability, because if it isn't up, it's useless. And so what SRE is about, SRE is a field that is attempting to um, make sure that you have the right amounts of reliability, and you'll see what I mean by that later. And to do that, it attempts to engineer failure out of the system. That's its primary purpose in life, right, is to do this so that you have the right amount. Because the tricky thing that you get is you have this interesting tug of war that goes on. DevOps was another response to this, and we'll talk about that as well. This tug of war between the people that, whose job it is to write software and therefore to iterate and therefore to make new things and to make features, and those who have to operate stuff and really would like things to stay as stable as possible because the more you perturb it, the less reliable it is, right? So we have this really tricky thing. There's a group of people out there who want things to stay the same, a group of people who want to iterate as fast as possible. So what do you do about that? So um, before I talk more about how you deal with that sort of stuff, I, I feel really compelled to put this picture up. This is the sort of picture that we used to put up in the beginning of DevOps. Um, this is Legacy of Man, is what, it, what it's called, in which we were to say, once upon a time, over here is the sysadmin, and now we have evolved over there to DevOps, right? Um, this, is, this used to be the tale that used to be told. And I want to tell you that I'm here to tell you that I'm not asserting that over here is DevOps and over there is SRE, OK? I am not asserting that. What is going on here is that there are two sort of parallel tracks in the, the operations world attempting to deal with the same problems, but dealing with them slightly differently. One is not more advanced than the other. They are just two different ways of doing it. And they have things to teach each other. And that's part of what I want to talk about. OK, so one of the things I'll be talking about comes a lot when I talk about SRE. SRE, in theory, at least the title certainly came from the land of Google. They published this lovely book. Um, it's a little short on plot and character development, but I really recommend it. Um, and it's their understanding of what SRE means to Google and what Google SRE is. And it's a, it's a really good book. Um, but the thing that people often ask when I talk about SRE is like, is it just Google? Is SRE just a Google thing? And it's not, right? This is just a bunch of names uh, that all have uh, SRE teams. Even sometimes they don't call them SRE teams. For example, Facebook has what they call production engineering. You know, is there is there is there SRE group? But everybody thinks they're doing they're doing SRE. So and the other thing I want to say about this, in terms of there being like lots of different places and lots of different ways to do SRE, um, uh, there is a book coming out. Uh, I'm not, but we haven't really announced it yet. So don't tell any 
anybody, or maybe tell everybody you know, um, that there's another book coming out about SRE that I'm going to be editing. Um, so you know, you might find it's interesting. It attempts to approach the wider bit of what SRE is, to, to map out different parts of what the SRE world is like in SRE space. And there's some cool stuff in there coming. So OK, so are we ready to talk about SRE? Yes? yes. See, I love it. See, it's good when you prep the audience. So the place that I like to start when I tell people, like people come to me and say, what's SRE? How do I learn about it? Once upon a time, at the very first SRE con, which is, as you heard, a conference specifically for SREs to talk about SRE sort of stuff, there was the very first talk was a keynote given by the gentleman who was responsible for coining the name at Google, Ben Trainer, now Ben Trainer Sloss. And he gave a really great talk um, that was the keynote that was meant to, to indicate what he thought SRE was, at least to him. And that had in it this slide, which I did not actually get from him directly, so it's a dramatic recreation. Um, so any typos and stuff are mine. These were his list of what consisted, what SRE consisted of. Now we're not going to be able to talk about all these things because I only have a short amount of time. So we're going to focus on some of the parts here. So specifically, let's start with these three. This says that you should have an SLA for your, ser for your service, right? A service level agreement for your service. You should measure report performance against that SLA and use error budgets and gate launches on them. Now, Error budgets. Okay, so that's a really interesting idea here that I think is perhaps one of the more crucial and critical things out of at least the Google strain of SRE to hear about. So the idea goes a little bit like this I have a service or I have an application and I expect it to be a certain amount reliable. There are very few services in this world that have to be 100% reliable. Maybe the thing that's ticking in your chest, maybe the thing that's keeping the plane in the sky, but everything else probably can have some downtime. You can have fewer nines than, than all of them, right? So if you could come up with the understanding of just how reliable you think your service needs to be, like is it okay to have downtime once a year? Okay, might be. Then what you can do is say, let's just say I have a service that I think should be up 80% of the time, and then 20% of the time it's okay if it's down during that time for maintenance or whatever. My error budget is that 20%, that 20% where I do not expect it to be up, okay? When I have an error budget, that means I can do the following, like this. So we come up with something where we say, hey, we're gonna determine what up means or what working means. Um, we're gonna come up with a service level objective, like how, how you know, does it respond, does it respond this quickly, all the other things that you can imagine as part of an objective for your service. Okay? Once you can come up with that and you can agree on that, you and everybody else in the organization can agree on that for the service, then you can stick it in your monitoring system. And you'll have a monitoring system that everybody can look at as the source of truth and agree with it. So far so good? So once you have that, then what we can do when it comes time to decide whether, whether you want to launch your next version of your product or your next version of the service or to rev or to deploy something, you can, you can say, hey, have I, have I been within the period of time? Um, you know, have, I, have I exceeded my error budget? Well, I haven't. You know, I've been up 90% of the time, so therefore I'm well within that budget. But if my service has been up 70% of the time, then you could make the really reasonable decision that says, no, 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 I'm not going to put I'm not going to perturb this any further. We're going to spend a little more time working on figuring out why this thing isn't up as much as it should be. So you're basically gating launches based on whether or not you have met your error budget. Does that make sense? Yes? Good? So, so here's the thing to realize about SRE that I think is useful. What you can do using certain techniques is you can create these virtuous loops where it is the case that if, in fact, you find that your service is down more than it should be, well, if you can't actually launch new features, that's going to put some pressure on the developers to make sure that it's more reliable. Right? And that's a beautiful thing, like this, this, this loop here, because things get better in the right direction. OK, so here's the middle ones. Common staffing pool for SRE and dev, meaning you hire for people, all the people that can write software. Um, excess ops work overflows to dev team. This is going to be really, really uh, uh, her heretical in this room. I think you're going to love it, though. And the idea that you're capping SRE operational load at 50%. The notion is, is that your SRE should be able to work on things that make the system better, not firefighting, not doing tickets, not having an operational load. So if you're running a service and its operational load is over 50%, then you get what, goes, what, what they call uh, um, how would I say, nicely um, handing back the pager, where you say, OK, folks, I'm not going to be able to take care of your service until you get your operational load under control. Here's the pager. Put your devs on the pager. Once the devs are on the pager, the first two times they get woken up at 2 AM is the last time those bugs show up in production, right? <laughs> right? So, so there's a notion that you can hand back the, hand back the pager, right? And that's a kind of cool idea. Another idea that, that and, and I want to say, in order to do that, 
you can guess that you have to have management support, right? To do the things we're talking about here, if your management is not behind us, if someone isn't, isn't at the top willing to say no, we think reliability is as important as your latest, greatest feature or when you actually launch, then this does not work and do not try to do it at your company. If you don't have that, don't try. Because you will only, you only set yourself up for failure and I don't want to do that. Okay, so uh, last one, the last set I want to talk about, which has shown up lovely, I'm so happy in the DevOps world, is the notion that you should have a post-mortem for every event. People like to call it different things that don't have the word mort in it, um, but whatever. Um, and that post-mortems are blameless and focused on process and technology, not people. Somebody made a mistake. What was the context? What were the controls that were in place that allowed them to make this mistake, right? When we hear about S3 going down because they were able to, to push the button that made everything go blah. What should have been in place to prevent that? So you spend your time looking at the process, not the people. Because it is truly the case that you can't fire your way to reliable. <laughs> it's just true. Because if, because one of the things that we have in this country is this notion like, oh, they made a mistake, fire them, right? And the thing is, is that after a while, all you're gonna do is get down to one person sitting in the corner with a cigarette doing this, you know, <laughs> not willing to do anything for you, right? Because they're just, they, they're not gonna do stuff. You can't fire your way to reliable. So part of the idea here, here is that there are ways to structure your operations stuff such that you can together work to continuously improve in one of these virtuous loops. So with that, what I wanted to do, because there's, there's a bunch of people who do this job for a living to talk about this, all I wanted to do is basically put SRE on your radar. Um, there's lots of ways to do SRE. There are lots of places. I'd be happy to talk about this stuff. I'd be happy to talk about SRECon um, and et cetera. But I want you to know that, that like, you, know, you should just check this stuff out. Go read the Google book read other books, come talk to me, et cetera. Um, and I guess if you want to get in touch with me, because I'd love to talk, here's how you find me. Here's my Twitter thing, otter book from that book that I wrote once upon a time. Um, I, if you want to talk uh, about AppSera and the stuff we make, I'd be glad to do that. And if you want to drink, I'd be glad to give you a thing to drink with. So um, with that, I just want to thank you for your attention. And I hope that you'll, you'll give like, as much appreciation and attention as you've gave, given me to the lovely panelists that are about to come out. Thank you. Thank you.